This is single-handedly the best crater motherboard for your Ryzen 9000, 8000, 7000, and above and beyond CPUs. So this is the X870E from Asus ProArt, and we're gonna take a look at what it offers and why is it so expensive. Let's take a look. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done. Also, check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So you probably know I've got a love and hate kind of relationship with ProArt motherboards. Just a quick little side note. If you followed my Z790 ProArt story and what a customer service I've actually, you know, experienced, I've had some behind the scenes closed door meetings with some of the heads of Asus UK. And then some of these concerns have gone to HQ and they're implementing quite a lot of different new things because of what I've experienced and the video I made. So I'm just waiting for a statement statement from HQ so we can really dive deeper what they're gonna change but seems like our videos and your comments have made a difference so thank you very much by the way if you do enjoy these motherboard videos hit that like button it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already and let's unbox this first thing I notice is ready for advanced AI PC what's exactly AI about this PC the CPU doesn't have an NPU the GPU that you're gonna put in there yes potentially is this motherboard really an AI motherboard right now everything needs to be AI, right? Underneath, we have the user quick start guide. Wi-Fi antenna, it's the same one. They haven't changed that. It's great and nice that you've put this PCB ruler in here, but I don't know any creative person who would actually use this. We've got the M.2 rubber standoff, if you've got one-sided M.2. Here's another one, a display port cable to actually have video pass through through the USB 4 that you'll see in a minute. We've got an M.2 quick slide, something like that in here. We've got M.2 quick latch, some SATA cables, and the front panel connector, which is nice. Okay, one thing I'm noticing as well, the packaging is a little bit better than previously. They didn't used to have this like foamy plasticky thing underneath there. So that protects all the backside of the motherboard a lot more. All the SMDs, little tiny capacitors, things that are on the other side, they get protected. Now, first, I am absolutely loving the ProArt design. I think more and more PC parts manufacturers should do this. This looks gorgeous. A little bit of a minimalistic uh, look. We've got some ProArt uh, like gold and black design. I wish they made their logo a little bit more simpler. I think this is a little bit too much. Figure out somehow how you can implement the Asus triangle type of logo into ProArt. I'd love to see that because this is a little bit too mental to me. We've got some big heat sinks for our power deliveries and VRMs. We see a huge heat sink for the top slot in here. We saw some heat sinks underneath here. Here. So this is like the chipset heat sink in the bottom here and then the big heat sink for our M.2s on the there. So before we look at the motherboard connectors, this is the same AM5 socket that supported your Ryzen 7000, also 8000 and now 9000 as well and hopefully even more and beyond. I believe there's going to be another generation of CPUs that are going to go for this socket. So it's great kind of upgradability that you have with this socket, which is fantastic. Now these are DDR5 slots. There's four slots so you you can put up to 192 gigabytes right now at this point. I think in the future you might be able to support even more when you know larger dim sticks actually come out. 256 probably in here. The website says that you can have up to 8,000 plus megahertz dim stick slots here. So that means that if you want to run faster RAM, the Ryzen 9000 will have better IMC and memory support and faster memory. Also with four dim slots. So if you'd like that, you probably want to go with Ryzen 9000, not Ryzen 7. 7, then let's take a look at some of the connectors and we start from the top there. We've got two power connectors, CPU 1 and 2. Then we've got some fan connectors. Interesting, all of them are capped off by the rubber to protect them. We've got the CPU fan, CPU optional, so they share the bandwidth. And then we've got the AIO pump fan, which runs 100% time all the time. We have CPU over voltage header or jumper in here. This is kind of like a weird thing.
think this is a creator motherboard. I don't think creators will be overclocking with this. And if they want to do overclocking, they're not going to go with this motherboard. So that's a little bit confusing for me. And this, you can do overclocking with this even without this header. This is like an extra, extra voltage. If you want to send it to the CPU and, you know, potentially cook it, then just put the jumper on the very right and middle one. We've got RGB. This is a 5 volt ARGB header, 24 pin ATX power for your PC. We've got a front panel USB C connector, and that is 20 gigabits in speed, USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 slot, another chassis fan header here. This is front panel USB type A header, and this supports 5 gigabit speeds. Then we have two SATA ports in here. We have front panel header over here. Next, another chassis fan. Then we've got a temperature header, and then I'm not sure what these two headers are there. I believe these are the clear CMOS or MR test header over there, so you can kind of jump the, the battery in here. Another sensor here, the T2 chassis, and then the temperature, another two temperature headers here if you want to add anything. Two more SATA ports. We've got some USB 2.0 ports in here, three of them. Then another 5 volt ARGB header and another 5 volt ARGB header. This is a TPM header over there. Com header and front panel audio. Interestingly, this time there is no 12 volt ARGB headers, only five and three of them in here. Next, let's take a look at the M.2 slots. And this is where things get very, very interesting. So I'm liking that they're doing this quick release kind of a button here. You just press down and then the top just comes off. You've got a massive heating for the top, as you can see here. It's very, very big, a lot of metal in here. And then you even have some, like a little bit of heating underneath as well, tiny one that squeezes or gets a little bit more heat out from the bottom in there. So you don't need any tools to actually install M.2 here. Just pop it in there. And with this quick release back here, you can just install the M.2. That's really, really nice. Now they say it's a very DIY, you know, friendly and PC friendly. Friendly, but you still have to have a screwdriver to actually screw this bottom heatsink off to get your M.2s installed. Okay, so this heatsink is quite large. As you can see, there is no heatsinks underneath, only on the top. And the interesting thing is, all of these M.2 slots on this motherboard are PCIe Gen 5. This is PCIe Gen 5 that goes to the CPU. And because there's no block diagram available at the moment, I'm not exactly sure where do these go, whether chipset or to the CPU, but the Ryzen CPU has more PCIe lanes than Intel. Most likely it will go somewhere there. So as you can see, there is 24 altogether usable lanes. Four of them are saved for the chipset. So there's four in here, 16 in here, and another four that you can put somewhere over here. So one of these will go to the CPU as well. And then you get M.2 in there and M.2 in here. Interestingly, only this slot in here supports the 110 millimeters, a little bit longer M.2 SSDs. Now let's talk about the PCIe expansion slots. There are three in here. The top slot, if you just have a GPU in there, it's going to be PCIe Gen 5 X 16. But if you slot anything on the bottom one here as well, or have like two of the ProAd 4080 Supers, for example, or maybe 5080 Supers, then you can have two GPUs in here and both of them are going to run PCIe Gen 5 X8, which is the same as PCIe Gen 4 X16, which is really, really nice. So you're getting a full fat bandwidth in there. The only downside is if you have some of the older GPUs that only have PCIe 4 supported, you'll actually start to run that PCIe Gen 4 X8 slot. But we still know that PCIe Gen 3 X16 is not going to be limiting really any of your GPU, you know, performance. So that's plenty. You can have two GPUs and that's plenty of bandwidth to share between them two. This bottom one here is PCIe Gen 4 X4 slot. So plenty of bandwidth there. Now, I don't know if it shares any of the bandwidth of some of these slots in here. Doesn't seem like it because all of the M.2 slots are PCIe Gen 5, which is really nice. So you can have really fast storage. Now, what they have also changed in here is this GPU locking mechanism. As you remember, they used to have this button over here that would kind of open it. But this time they kind of got rid of it for some reason. And if we take like this pretend GPU here, so this is the M.2 card, apparently the way this works is that if you just slot it in there, the lock here pushes up and then you can just yank it out by pulling it from that side and it comes off. If you try to pull it from the other side, it won't come off. As you can see, if I help from this side, it's not going anywhere, but pulling it from the IO side, it just comes off and it's exactly the same on the bottom here. Just comes off. Let's see if the bottom one works like that as well. 
The bottom one doesn't, so only the top two. So bottom one, you do have to actually open it to yank it loose. I'll go back to the front panel USB-C actually for a moment because that also supports quick charge 4 plus, which is up to 30 watts for your mobile phone. So if you have a front panel USB-C and you want to charge your phone, you can get 30 watts from there. Interestingly, they don't have an extra six pin PCA connector that goes onto there. So I'm not sure how they're going to get this power delivered, whether the ATX or some other way. On the back of the motherboard, nothing really happening. There's some Fizen controllers over there. I'm not sure what these are for, but nothing excited. Just a black backplate. Let's take a look at this fat IO, what we have here. As you can see, our Wi-Fi connectors are a little bit different. You don't have to screw them in anymore. They are just quick kind of a click connect. No more screwing in. That's gone faster, which is really nice. And we have Wi-Fi 7, which is insane. And with the two network ports of 10G and 2.5G, the connectivity, network connectivity is insane what you can do with this. I'm liking this a lot. There's a few audio ports. We've got a line out, line in and mic in. So no optical out audio. In terms of USB ports, we have a lot of 10 gigabit USB type A's. All of these teal ports are 10 gigabits in speed. There's seven of them. That's plenty of bandwidth for all of your, your stuff. Then we have two USB type 4 ports. So this one and that bottom one here, a USB 4, which is up to 40 gigabits per second, plus display pass through, which means that you can take the cable that was in the box from your GPU, put it into this port here, and then you'll get video output through there as well. Now you could actually get just a video output through the internal iGPU because, you know, there's iGPU and some of the Ryzen CPU as well but if you want like a little bit more power you can get the display output through the GPU as well through here so for creators if you will need USB-C video output that is very very nice HDMI port for video output as well we have a clear CMOS button here if you plug in your BIOS USB onto this here so this is USB 2.0 so you can easily update the BIOS by plugging your USB stick with the right BIOS in there press that button and BIOS starts updating we have another USB-C port in the back here which is 20 gigabits in speed uh, USB 3.2 x2 slot so you've got two of them the front panel and the back panel so it's very very powerful and plentiful the only thing that I'm seeing here is not that much difference between this and the x670 e ProArt motherboard which I'm using for the Ryzen 7000 9000 testing the only thing that I'm seeing is different is obviously the uh, PCI Gen 5 compatibility there's a little bit more that you can put into there we've got Wi-Fi 7 in terms of the back ports and network connectivity there was still USB 4 ports in there nothing has really changed but also the RAM is changed, the RAM compatibility and how fast you can run the RAM. So that's nice. Now, the final thing I want to mention is the price. Now, this is not a cheap motherboard. And for creators are looking for something solid and professional. This has all the bells and whistles. I like that the 10G is there. Plenty of connectivity, networking, everything is there. If you're using Adobe Creative Cloud, then this motherboard with this purchase, you can also get three months for free, which actually lowers the price and makes this kind of worth it and makes sense. Now, I like that this has gone more DIY for friendly. The, still the issue with I have is why still use the screwdriver? Why figure out like another way of attaching things on the bottom here as well? So we don't have to use a screwdriver at all because it's nice that the top slot, you can pop just your M.2 in, boom, it just slots in there, clips in and that goes in without any screws. But then the bottom, we still have to do that. At the same time, I'm so glad this motherboard exists and can't wait to build a creative PC with something like this. If you want to see this, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, or check out the latest bank for bulk builds in the video description below. You can find builds for every single budget there. Go check them out. Uh, they'll lead you to the latest build. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.